good evening, Council. Happy New Year to each and every one who is assembled here. I am Fred Williams. I am the president of the West End Citizens Council. I am here on behalf of my group in collaboration with several other groups concerning some issues surrounding one of the council members. We had major issues with this question of residency. And what our sincere hope was, was to bring some clarity and honesty to the whole process. It came to our knowledge that one of the council people were in violation of clear ethics rule. That rule stating that one must live in the district in which he resides for the duration of his or her said term. Well, one of the council members didn't do diligence in follow and adhere to that particular rule, which is clearly a violation of ethics rules. And we are just here to make sure that one, that that does not play out again, because it's hard to fathom that this rule is in its existence for each and every member that none of the colleagues of this particular member picked up on that, that he was in clear violation of the ethics rule. And it's hard for me to fathom that. Well, me as Joe Doyle, the general public, can pick it up. You guys who are politicians should have been able to pick that up. Which, in other words, he was making decisions with public funding all over Georgetown County, of which where he should not have been sitting. And that's a major problem. The district that he represented was grossly neglected, but he's casting votes throughout Georgetown County as to how monies were allocated. Not right, not fair. And we just <coughs> want to express our, our opinion. He's not here presently, but it is our sincere hope that he'll be recused from county council going forward. I thank you for your time. Marilyn Hemingway. Good evening. My name is Marilyn Hemingway and I am a resident of County Council District 2. And um, I first want to congratulate Mr. John Thomas and Ms. Lily King Johnson, your new positions, and Mr. Louis Moran, who has become a member of the County Council. I also want to note that Ron Charlton is my county council representative, and I'm going to take this time to not quite butter him up, but, um, <laughs> but to acknowledge that Ron has always um, deal, dealt with me in a fair and reasonable manner, and I'm sure a couple of times when I walked through his door, he did question, like, oh, here comes Marilyn again. But that's okay, because we shook hands on it, smiled, and, and we got through it. I've always found him to be fair and professional. Well, I'm here today because I want to express, um, as a resident of Georgetown County, and as a taxpayer, my expectation of your leadership that it will be accountable, transparent, and fair moving forward in all decisions facing County Council. I'm also CEO, President, and Founder of the Galagichi Chamber of Commerce, my startup that I started in 2008. And our mission is to raise global awareness of profitability and sustainability of African American <coughs> businesses and businesses that support African Americans within the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. I'm sure and I hope that all of you are aware that the Gullah Geechee have played a major part in the history of Georgetown. So as President and CEO, it's my expectation moving forward that we benefit from the history and the labor that was uh, done here in Georgetown that we still have not uh, received maybe compensation from um, that labor. So moving forward, you will be seeing more of me as CEO of the Delahitchie Chamber of Commerce, and hopefully we can work together to, to help promote businesses, not only the Delahitchie businesses, that what we will do moving forward will benefit all businesses, therefore benefiting all residents of, the, of Georgetown County and beyond. We were the epicenter of the rice culture, and we could certainly move moving forward be the epicenter of other industries that may come to the county, but more importantly, making investment in local assets and opportunities. 
So once again, I expect from your leadership to see some more openness, accountability, and transparency. And I thank you for your time. Look forward to working with you. Janet Graham. Good evening, happy new year, and congratulations to all the newly elected uh, positions. My name is Janet Graham, I am a Victorian, a West Ender, and most of all a taxpayer. And I find it unsettling in regards to this residency issue of a council person. Uh, you can have your mail say anyway, you can have 10,000 post office boxes, but your physical address should be made public to your records if you are a council person. I just hope that the council will take into consideration this matter and make sure that all council members have their residency and information up to date in the future. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Wesley Gibson. I'm a resident of Georgetown County and a taxpayer, and I'm speaking on behalf of Citizens for Progress. We came here for one thing, and as always with county council, they throw a curveball at you in the 11th hour. James Austin Beard was supposed to be running for chairman of county council. He's not here. Why is he here? Because he fraudulently signed documents saying he lived at one address for years and didn't live at that address and made major decisions in this county, spent millions of dollars of our money, but yet he is not man enough to be sitting right there with Mr. Thomas and sitting. That's what he wanted. We have a packet we mail to each one of them. We mail it to the media. We mail it to, we mail it to the county administrator, who's not here. And we express our displeasure with the way things were going with Mr. Beard. He put a resident, 510 North Magnolia Street in Andrews, as his residence. He's been using that since 2013. I'm sure some of you know that, but you weren't trustworthy enough to stand up and tell him either move in your district or get out. If everybody here knows it, I'm sure some of you know it. Now, we did all this research, we got the media, and then everybody scrambled. You couldn't hear nothing from him, couldn't hear nothing from none of y'all about him fraudulently. It's election fraud. And we're going to ask Mr. Thomas, the president, to have him step down. Not only step down, we want an investigation by SLED to find out how y'all allowed him to serve for so many years. He neglected his district. The people in Big Damn Swamp had to flood and couldn't get across the water. But he could serve. And he could build a $3 million elementary baseball field in the Wakamal Neck. That's where all the money's going. $400,000 for bike caps so people can ride the golf cart from Lakesfield to Pauly's Island without getting on the road. $960,000 y'all spending for a tee ball for a person to hit a ball off a stick. That's the kind of money you spend. You're spending it blindly. And it's time for y'all to be held accountable. And I doubt that everything y'all do, we're going to be there watching. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Y'all have a good year. Good, good evening <clears throat> to uh, Councilman John Thomas, Chairman, uh, 
Honorable Louis Durant, Black County Councilman. Glad to see you sitting and serving. That's a high honor that you have uh, achieved. John Morant, thank you for serving. Thank you for serving with you. It's been a pleasure for the years that we've sat and done the work to the community. It's always a pleasure to be serving with you. On tonight, there were two groups that came out and spoke, including the NAACP, which I'm speaking on behalf of. A complaint was filed against James Austin Beard to each one of you. These complaints were filed based on information that has been given and received and collected across the county government. Looking at the ordinance, according to Georgetown County, a resident's requirement for one to qualify for election as a member of county council, he must be a resident of Georgetown County. <coughs> to run in the single member dist district, he must also be a member of the district in which he seeks election. To remain a member of that district until this term is completed. We have one in Austin Beard that, from the information that we have found, that was not the case. And this is not the verdict either. I am up here on behalf of the NAACP, which have submitted the information and evidence that Austin Beard does not meet the requirements to be determined by Georgetown County Ordinance and Code of Enforcement for South Carolina. I'm not going to be redundant to some of the information that was already talked about. But the evidence is clear. Georgetown County Council needs to follow its ordinance and conduct a full investigation to determine also be its compliance with the residency requirements. If this is determined that there is a violation, Mr. Beard must resign. His office and a special election should be held. I seem to recall not too long ago, there was a war that was fought over taxation without representation. It seems as though that is the same case today. We ask that you not let this continue in Georgetown. The taxpayers elected you to serve. The key word is serve. We did not elect kings. We elected servants to serve the people, to be good stewards over the money of Georgetown County taxpayers. We deserve true and fair representation. And we want to make sure that every community is treated fairly. Fair representation is necessary in order for equality to take place. The right to vote did not come on a silver platter and without a price. I think we all have paid that price. <coughs> we ask that you be fair, be good stewards of our tax dollars. Everyone deserves the right to be served equally, fair, and balanced. The monies that are spent in Georgetown County needs to be shared based on the needs of the people in Georgetown County. <coughs> Remember, we elected servants and not kings. And we will treat you that way. As servants and not kings. Be fair. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Looking forward to working with you. God bless you.